Hey everyone, it's Sky from Sky High Gaming here, coming at you with a two hour game review. Footage feature here is from my blind playing through, just up to the two hour mark of gameplay. That way, if we're having any issues with the game, or if it's simply not fun, we're still able to return it as long as we play it for less than two hours, thanks to our local Steam store policy. Today we're playing My Friend Pedro, a bullet hell, side-scrolling, action platformer shooter, featuring plenty of gore and bananas. The game starts with you waking up to the voice of Pedro, a floating banana that seems to have telekinetic or ESP abilities. So, naturally, you decide to listen to this voice and follow his directions blindly. Seems good, right? As you jump into gameplay, you're able to choose from a keyboard and mouse configuration or a controller layout. I personally started with a controller configuration, but did end up switching to using keyboard and mouse because I preferred the higher level of precision when it comes to aiming. Now, using a controller did feel very smooth, whether you're shooting enemies or jumping through levels, this is really a personal preference for me. So you're thrown into a quick tutorial area where you're taught wall jumping, rolling in a tiny ball as if you were Samus Aran, and you're introduced to weapons along with enemies along the way. But things escalate pretty quickly from there. We're given a bit of a teaser of what our plot is here, and it reminds me of a humor and a violence that's almost pulled from something like Deadpool. But this fighting style you're going to see is going to be something closer to a Max Payne, The Matrix, or Equilibrium. Like many video game cliches, we let the boss get away right at the beginning of the first chapter, only to have to go hunt him down much later. So this being my blind playthrough, I decided that I would just kind of manfight him and see how things go. We take him out with relative ease, not sustaining too much damage, but Pedro has now given us a sense of bloodlust and a new plot. We must kill them all. Some of the major gameplay mechanics involve using wall jumps, parkour, bullet time, or even the surrounding environment to kill any enemy units plotting against you and your banana friend. Good use of bullet time, along with perfecting the dodge mechanic, is stressed early on in the game, and Pedro will often remind you when you're doing well, or if you could be doing better. The strategic use of split aiming, slow motion, and stylish window breaching creates one sensational action sequence after another in an explosive battle through the violent underworld. They've done a great job to make it a satisfying feeling when you're jumping through glass, split aiming down a couple baddies, and Pedro pops in on the corner to positively reinforce that you're doing a good job. At the end of each zone, you're taken to a score screen that considers the amount of damage you've taken in the level, any deaths, along with the total enemies you killed, and the speed that you've cleared the map when calculating your overall score. It really gives off this kind of vibe that this game is begging to be speed ran. After the score screen, you're given an auto-populated scene from your run that includes an intense moment that you could save as a GIF or upload directly to your personal Twitter. The game uses this boxy style, almost Metroidvania-esque layout for maps, often including small puzzles or obstacles that you need to overcome in order to progress further. It's a lot of fun to use the bullet time mechanic in fights to style on enemies and shoot down your foes, but often I found myself not knowing when to use it exactly and would run into giant hordes and groups of enemies where I would only hope to dodge the oncoming assault. It was very satisfying to have our first interaction of environmental kills. There's lots of fun little moments of heartbreak where you're taught mechanics to practicing things and then immediately getting your spirits crushed. The game difficulty progression felt steady. I would find myself getting well versed on new skills or weapons that have been introduced in the game. And as I would get a little bit further in, there would be new things added in that kept it fresh across my two hour playthrough. But I did still find myself taking damage a lot of times due to rushing and not using mechanics like bullet time. It becomes invaluable in fights. And while you may find instances where you're stuck needing to reload, you can look for nearby objects to kick at the enemy, which may include body parts. One of the sections I had to have enjoyed the most was when we were first approached with a motorcycle racing section of the game. Into a situation of coming into an onslaught of enemy units on motorcycles and inevitably cars as well. It becomes pretty important to learn how to use bullet time while riding the motorcycle because it makes it the one consistent way to take down your enemies. You get to your first major boss fight against the Sausage Man from earlier, and after an exchange of insults, he moves right on ahead with trying to kill you. And with us not having much plot of why they're even after us as is, all we know to do is to fight back 
do our best to try and survive. So after a few failed attempts, we finally come in and slay the Sausage Man, and we move on to our next issue. My friend Pedro does a great job at making the game feel lighthearted, even though you're slaying hundreds of enemies without the least bit of remorse for them. This game has no shortage of interesting characters, and while they may not get much more difficult as the game progresses, the saturation of them certainly will increase, and they will get new types of guns that you'll have to learn how to experience and play against. The puzzles do gradually become more difficult as time goes on, but nothing that a veteran puzzle action platformer player wouldn't be able to overcome. And if you do well, you may be visited by a more blessed banana. The music that accompanies the game does a great job at building suspense and excitement. And while I personally may not be throwing out the cash to grab the soundtrack right now, I could envision many of these tracks getting added to my workout playlists in the future. Now, the game isn't without its faults. The ragdoll-esque nature of how your body works, sometimes it will just fall to your death, or it may appear as if you have no bones in your body whatsoever. Another thing that's a little awkward is sometimes your body will flip off of objects rather than drop off of it directly, resulting in interactions like that where Pedro will always tell you how much better you could be. If there was one thing I had to say this game does really well, it's bringing in this added layer of hype and excitement that you get from every single kill you get. Headshots and environmental kills with barrels are some of the most satisfying things you can do in this game, and Pedro is always one to pop up in the top right corner to show you his own level of excitement as you kill in his name. Other satisfying moments were when you would jump down on enemies to kick gas cans at them, either taking off their heads or exploding through the barrage of crossfire. Pedro popping up is a happy little reminder of the friendship that he shares with the main protagonist, but as you get further into the game, you're thrown into experiences that make you question the sanity of our masked, banana-inspired shooter. While the big concept of this review series is that we're only playing the game for two hours, the common theme from other people who experience the full game is that it's relatively short, being only four to six hours of playtime for the full story, assuming that you're not dying too much and only doing a single playthrough on the introductory difficulty level. But you shouldn't feel bad if you find yourself being one of those players that keeps approaching the same scene over and over again, trying to pull off some crazy strategy and get a high score, for that's where a lot of the replayability of this game is. Now this game is in no way supposed to be a realistic shooter, and you can tell that by some of the over-the-top effects and animations that accompany some of the characters. And if fighting a Santa Claus on a spaceship isn't enough, the game does get crazier as you fall into the inner psyche of Pedro himself. It was at this point that I really understood how much I was enjoying myself in this game, for the craziness was only beginning, and I was approaching my two-hour mark of play very fast. When it comes to whether you should buy this game or wait for a sale, I would highly recommend buying it, although if you act quickly, you're able to get this game right now on the Steam Summer Sale for a little bit of a reduced price. My friend Pedro gave me a great deal of amusement over my two-hour playthrough, and while I did pick it up on sale, it is absolutely worth the cost at the full price of $20. Now, it would be really cool to see this game with a level editor or Steam Workshop support coming to it in the future, because not all players find enjoyment and replayability being postured around getting a higher score than their previous run, and something like this could help extend the longevity of this run-and-gun platformer shooter. Playing my friend Pedro was a very satisfying experience, to which I know I'll be putting additional hours in as time goes on. The idea of taking a game like this and pushing myself to the limit to maybe see how fast I can clear levels is appealing to me, and the obscurity of how this game progresses just makes it even more captivating. Thanks for checking out my two-hour review of my friend Pedro. If you're interested in seeing similar and future videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any recommendations for the next two-hour review we do, drop a comment in chat. Looking forward to hearing from you.